Assalamualaikum and a very good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our sharing session today. And I would like to welcome all of you in the Facebook Live and also in the Zoom to hear more about our interesting topics on tips to engage with your child meaningfully at home. First of all, let me introduce myself. I'm, I'm Apika, final year student of speech language therapies from University Kebangsa in Malaysia, UKM. And I will be the moderator for our sharing session today. Uh, before we start, I would like to remind to all of the audience uh, to mute while we are having our session. Thank you. So at this point, I want to I want to introduce our featured speakers so that we can get into our content. We have Mr. Chua Chongki. He is an occupational therapist and the clinical director of Smilestone Pediatric Therapy Center in Poh. Uh, and then we have Dr. Chu Shini, a speech language therapist from UKM, and Miss Faith Ng, a speech language therapist and the co-founder of Bookism as our panelist for today and four final year speech language therapy student from UKM, which are Husna, Nabila, Sharina, and myself, that will also be the speakers for our sharing session today. Attention to all, you may type your question in the chat box at any time during the session, and we will collect and address them at the end of the session. All right, without any further ado, I would like to welcome our first speaker, Sharina, that will be talking about the choices of toys. Sharina, the mic is yours. Thank you, Afrika. Let me uh, present my slides. Okay, I hope you can see my slides. All right, good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are full ended on uh, this uh, Saturday morning, all right? Okay, so I'm going to talk about the choices of toys. Okay, so there will be a time where you're having difficulty what toys to buy for a child. And gonna make sure that your child is interested and it is also educational. So what toys come first? So it actually depends on few factors. And one of, it, one of it is depends on the child's age. For the babies, which is zero years old, the baby cares mostly about interactions with you or other family members. They usually like watching your face, listening to your voice, or just simply being with you. So for example, a sensory ball. Sensory ball, this toy I found it on Shopee and it's around 10 ringgits. So the sensory ball has the spikiness, which gives sensation to your baby to feel it and has an input on it. Since babies are growing, they have fine motor skills, which is the fingers. So you can try children rubber ball. It comes with, uh, this is 14 ringgit, it comes in a box and uh, it has few different shapes and have lines. And it actually gives, uh, like the blue one, it gives a uh, different sensations to your babies also. Or a soft stuffed animals, perhaps with smiling face. For this one, it's around eight ringgit. So what you can do with this toy is can maybe you can hold it and say, good chip, good chip, the baby with your smiling facial expressions. So what baby cares the most here is that your face notice your facial expressions and your uh, your interactions, your and your voice. So make sure when you uh, play with the baby, make sure to use the same words each time so the baby could catch up the words you are using. So the next one is the toddlers, which is one to four years old. So the toys I'm going to suggest are just a recommendation according to the age of the child, but it is not necessarily has to be only it. So for one to two years old children, you can introduce stacking rings. So for these toys, it sells around four ringgit in Shopee. It can teach your child turn taking skills like my turn, your turn and my turn, or can I mommy's turn or daddy's turn, and then your child's name Adam's turn. Make sure the words you are using are consistent and are always the same. If you want to say my turn and your turn, make sure every time you, uh, when you're teaching turn takings, then you have to use it for the same words. This toy also can teach color concepts. You can see the different colors and also the size of the rings. You can teach big and small and also the shape, which is a circle. So there will be sometimes your child doesn't let you touch the toy. They like to play alone, where we call it as solitary play. So at this stage, your child might uninterest with you or just like to play by themselves. So what you can do is try to get your child engaged in joyful interactions with you. So for example, the stacking rings. Maybe you could hold the last piece of the toy, which is a ball. After your child put all the rings, you can say, mommy has the ball. And you put on top of the stacking rings. At this point, your child should be looking at you and at the ball. So although it's a very short interaction, but actually there's a giant attention happening here. So don't worry if your child likes to play alone sometimes because they have to learn in playing independently. So the next toy I want to introduce is a click-clack car 
or you can search on Shopee, it's Lighting Car, it's around 13 ringgits. This toy introduced cost and effect. Cost and effect means that as soon as we put the car on top of the track, this is a cost. So the car will slide down, this is we call an effect. So cost and effect. So we can also improve turn taking skills, joint attention. Joint attention means that your child is able to focus on the play while you're interacting with them. Or also can improve your child's sitting behavior, like how long the child could sit still and able to do the table task. And also imitate actions. So if the child just exposed to this new toy, they might not knowing how to play it. So what you can do is you can model to them. Yeah, modeling, you should show them how the car slides down. So in modeling, you might need to do a lot of repetitions so your child can understand and also imitate your actions. So the, for the next category, categorize of the age is the two to three years old. So for two to three years old, I'll introduce the matching puzzle or you can search the keyword in Shopee is wooden puzzle toy. For each of them is around five ringgits. It has lots of categorization, just like I showed in the slides. You have shape, family, farm animals, wild animals, occupation, food, vegetables, and a lot of more fishes. So in this toy, we can improve child's matching skills, like picture to picture, and also the shape concept, if you bought the shape one. And most importantly, it's introduced new vocabulary to your child. As you can see, there's a lot of categorization here. So, before we play, remember to introduce the toy to your child first. You say, oh, it's a puzzle. Let's play puzzle. You stress the word puzzle because this is the word that I'm going to teach the child. While you're shaking the toys, and the sound will attract the child's attention, like shaking the box, like, and the child maybe will look at you, look at you while you're doing. And you can set a verbal routine means the same words that you are going to use for every time you play a toy, like before or after. For example, before you play, you say, let's open. So every time you play, you say, let's open. Or you can say, after you play the toy, you can say, bye-bye. I'll see you again. Such, such verbal routines. Use as simple as possible so that your child can capture it and make sure every time the words have to be the same so your child can learn it and get it. The next toys I'm going to introduce is the large vehicle toys. It can be ambulance, helicopter, aeroplane, or fire truck. This one is I searched the fire truck toy and it's around 50 ringgits. There's actually quite a few variations at there. This is only one of them. So these toys can let your child learn to relate the toys with real life objects. Because like due to the lockdown MCO, your child does not expose to outside world that much yet. So you can using these toys uh, to have uh, related to your real life. Uh, also, you can also teach uh, a lot of new vocabulary that are not daily used at home. It's not familiar to them. For example, the fire truck. You can say, building is on fire. Or like, water splash. Or you can say, firefighters to the rescue. Or ring, ring, ring. Fire alarm is ringing. Like this kind of word, they are not usually used at home. It's not a daily use. Okay, so for the next one, it's a three to four years old children. So I introduced the kitchen set play. So this is where the child starts to develop role playing or pretend play. So this is the kitchen play. I searched the keywords is the kitchen play and it's 11 ringgit for whole set. Another one is the play food card is 10 ringgit. Both of them is from Shopee. Okay, it's just a simple kitchen toy set with play food. So if you maybe have numbers of children at home, maybe they would like to play cooking set together. They have lots of vegetables, fruits, chicken, egg, you know, all those play food and kitchen utensils. So kitchen set introduce pretend play. For example, your child can be a chef. So who plans to serve a delicious milk cuisines and you can pretend to be a customer. You can have a dog like conversation with them. Tell them what you want to eat, what smells nice, what tastes good, or what do you prefer, or what do you recommend to them, what to cook. So, okay, so move on to the older children, which is more than four years old. So at this age, the children could have back-to-back -back conversation. At this point, they understand morals or personal values. In such, they will actually have cooperative play or rule-based play with other children. So for example, you could put Simon says, at this stage, your child already understand the rules. You can say like, all right, I'm going to be Simon. Everybody listen to me. Or who wants to be the Simon? 
or you can explain to the child the rules before you play if your child is first introduced to this game. Or you can do it a handcraft because children are curious and also creative. You can prepare as simple as a pack of colorful ice cream stick, a glue or a paper. And you say like, okay, let's create something and can introduce to your child. What do you have here? And ask them to create something with the sticks. So if your child is not sure how to start, you can model first. You can maybe make a house or you can break the stick and make a circle or you can set a team first. You ask the child, okay, today we are going to make some dessert. What do you like? Maybe your child like ice cream. So you can teach him how to make ice cream the circle with a triangle. Okay, so depends on your team. Or you can make a simple breakfast. Just prepare four pieces of bread with jam or jam that you can uh, let your child choose and maybe two packs of Milo powder. Just as simple as you can because you doesn't want to make a huge mess at home, right? Okay. okay, then you say to your child, okay, we're going to make breakfast. What do we have here? Or you could ask, what do you want to make? Or do you want to toast the bread if you had the toaster at home? Okay, ask, okay, what jam do you want to choose? What is your mood today? What jam do you want to like? Okay, at this point, you can actually ask few questions because the child is uh, older children. He, he could have back-to-back -back conversations. But for a younger child, like toddlers, try not to keep asking questions because they don't have much input yet. And they, know, they don't know what are you asking and they might not know the answer. So don't ask too much for younger child. And you have to make sure you teach them before you ask. Okay, so the next one is the example that I give. It might or might not switch your child. It actually also has to depend on your child's interest. Maybe your child like vehicles, car, motorcycle, trains, or stereotypically, maybe girls like to play dolls and boys like to play ball. Uh, boys like to play balls. But remember, toys like kitchen set or baby tub. Baby tub is a toy where you have a fake baby and a bathtub and you can feed the baby with the milk and or shower the baby, uh, wear the clothes for the babies. These are the pretend play are suitable for both boys and girls because your child don't have the concept that oh, only girls can play kitchen set but not the boys. It's not that. So make sure to introduce all of the toys to find their interest. Also, these toys are greatly improving their play development, their speech and language skills, their motor skills, life related skills, cognitive skills, a lot of skills on it. For the last one, you have to depend of course your financial. Maybe these toys are too fancy and you are unable to afford it because toys are quite expensive nowadays. Okay, so no worry. The next few topics we're going to talk about is how to smartly apply few ways in one material at your home. Thank you. Thank you, Sharina. Um, that was a very interesting sharing for us. Now, I, uh, I believe that mummies and babies already know what are the appropriate toys that you can buy from the Shopee, uh, as suggested by Sharina, uh, to your child, and you can play with your child at home during the MCO, especially. Now, without delays, I will pass to our next speaker, Husna, that is going to share steps in rotating your child's toys. Husna? Okay, thank you, Afika. Hi, everyone. I'm Husna. Uh, before that, I hope everyone uh, is at your home uh, healthy and safe. I hope that this, uh, we all hope that this sharing today will help mummies and daddies out there to make this lockdown period more bearable and more importantly, more meaningful for your child. So for today, I'll be sharing about toy rotation. So uh, just now, my friend Sharina had just shared about uh, choices of toys. And now I'll be talking about how mummies and daddies can manage your child's toys at home. But before I start, say just nak tanya a few, uh, one question. I just want to throw one question. Pernah tak, mummies and daddies, have you ever felt that uh, your house is always filled with your child's toys? Dekat living room ada, at your uh, countertop ada, in the hallway ada. And your child, your kids doesn't seem to be playing with all their toys food. If your answer is yes, then you need to know about this toy rotation. So first of all, uh, I would like to, uh, to uh, share with you what is toy rotation. So toy rotation is where you bring out a small selection of toys at one time and, and store the, the rest and then swap or change 
the time at the toys time by time this way your house will be will be more organized and your kids will appreciate their toys more next i'll share with you five reasons why you should rotate your child's toys first of all of course the cleaning will be more, much more easier number two studies have shown that too many toys actually cause causes distraction it's very hard for your kids your little kids to actually focus on a specific task if they are surrounded with lots of lot of toys susah nak focus kan kalau ada banyak sangat benda uh, around us uh, and number three fewer toys actually increase uh, their creativity they will learn to play with the toys much deeper and number four kids will play longer with fewer toys less distractions mean more focus and number five science has confirmed that kids are actually happier with fewer toys every time you uh, rotate the toys uh, you will bring excitement to your uh, child so mommies and daddies jangan risau they will have fun with uh, fewer toys also so mommies and daddies yang dah nak start doing this toy rotation here's a step by step guide on how you could rotate uh, your toys at home so first of all gather up kumpul semua toys yang ada dalam rumah at one place then number two you have to declutter uh, your toys buang what is not needed and keep what is needed you can either throw those uh, toys with missing pieces uh, toys that are no longer working or toys that are no longer suitable for your kids or you can always donate them number next you can earn uh, after you had declutter all the toys all uh, toys that are not needed number three pick only five to ten toys okay so uh before i go to the pick uh, this uh, five to ten toys i would like to bring more a bit about the declutter uh steps so in this decluttering steps you can also include your child in this decision making you can ask them to choose what they want to keep what they no longer want to play with this will not only teach them to be more grateful it also encourage reasoning skills and i'm sure they'll be glad to be part of the decision making then number three you pick only five to ten toys uh, to put into the toy rotation cycle you can either put into the, uh, a basket or a bin to be to make it more uh, presentable and organized if possible out of these five uh, to ten toys uh, you could provide variety types of toys dalam tu ada some moving toys like cars or trains some puzzles and also some sets of blocks make it more variety types of toys uh, the question that i think mummies and daddies might be thinking right now is can i only include toys in this toy rotation so the answer is actually no a part of toys you can also include storybooks and also non-toys objects in it so for example common things uh, at home like the empty uh, spray bottle or uh, a pen can also be included in this toy rotation cycle like i said before fewer toys increase their creativity so the empty bottle spray can also be maybe a gun legos could be a city of towers so let them explore and be creative and number four pack all after you have picked the five to ten toys pack and move other toys aside uh, somewhere that is out of your child's toys to less the distraction and number five swap or rotate the sets of toys every two to three weeks so uh, this week maybe you have this uh, five to ten uh, sets of toys maybe next week you have to change to another sets of five to tens of toys so this interval time uh, to rotate toys is much more dependent on mummies and daddies uh, and also your child if a younger child ataupun uh, baby yang uh, kecil sikit they may need daily toy rotation for example monday mommy put out uh, to play with balls for example then tuesday tukar pula to maybe teddy bear and so on so but for all the kids uh, uh, studies have shown that weekly basis uh, toy rotation is uh, appropriate for them so with this uh, five simple steps mommies and daddies can try at home and see 
how your kids will appreciate uh, their toys more and watch how you are actually giving your uh, kids a chance to play more deeply and meaningfully with their toys. Last week for uh, I end my sharing, uh, please don't also forget uh, to include physicals and any possible outdoor activities with them, especially during this lockdown uh, period. So uh, with that, thank you and happy trying mummies and daddies. I'll pass back to Africa. Yes, thank you, Husna. That was a very good tips uh, that we can practice, mommies and daddies. I love how Husna mentioned that kids are happier with fewer toys. Uh, with fewer toys, uh, it will also help them to increase their creativity as they start to explore many new things and also the things around them. And I hope, mommies and daddies, you can start uh, get your little helper and then start to uh, together work on um, keep all the toys that only needed uh, in certain period of time. So now we are on our third topic and I will be the speaker for this topic. I will talk about how one tool can be used in five or more different ways. So let me share my screen first, okay. So how one tool can be, uh, can be used in five different ways. And what is the tool that I'm going to introduce uh, to all the audience today is that handkerchief. Yes, it's very convenient. You can get it, it's already available at your home. So you, ju you just can use this sapu tangan or handkerchief uh, to create more activities in order to play with your child. So the first activity that you can use is peekaboo. Just by using this uh, handkerchief, you just can cover your face or your child face. And then what concept that you can introduce to your child? The eye contact. You can teach eye contact, anticipation, repetition, and also humor by cha and cha with your child, peekaboo. The second activity, again, just by putting this handkerchief at the back of your body, you can pretend to be a superhero. So the concept here that you can introduce is the pretend play. Just by using handkerchief, so another vocabulary or words that you can introduce like super, uh, uh, other than superhero, super mommy, super daddy, super Adam, for example, your child's name. And then other than that, the vocabulary ataupun perkataan yang kita boleh introduce is fly, terbang, jom, datang, superhero datang. And then in the third activity, okay, you, you just have to roll the handkerchief. Let me roll my handkerchief first, okay. And then put on top of your head or on top of your child's head, you can pretend it to be bunny ears. So again, the concept that we can introduce is pretend play. So the vocabulary that you can introduce to your child will be like hop, lompat, bunny, telinga bunny, or rabbit ears, two ears, long ears. And if you use a big handkerchief, you can big ears. That is the third, uh, the third way. And then the fourth way, another example of pretend play, which is you can pretend uh, this handkerchief to be a swing. Uh, for this activity, you might need a baby doll, or maybe you just need a bear like this one. So you and your child will together play and pretend this to be a swing. So you can uh, introduce like swing, oh oh, jatuh, and then you can swing, swing fast, swing slow, push, okay? So that is the uh, example of vocabulary that you can uh, introduce to your child. The next one, you may need a container. Or if you have an open, uh, a container with a lid, so you can teach concepts like open and also close. But uh, if you just uh, use a simple cup, uh, like uh, I'm using right now, so what you can do is that you can, by using handkerchief, so you can teach concepts like put, put, push, tolak, Tolak, oh, oh, terseket, terseket. So perkataan yang kita boleh introduce, terseket. Masuk dalam, masuk dalam. And then pull, tarik, dah habis. So that is the vocabulary that you can introduce to your child. And the next one, it's more related to life routine. As you know, uh, we always use handkerchief or, uh, or a washcloth to do uh, like cleaning, um, house chores, so that uh, during this uh, activity, you can teach concepts like cleaning or just uh, teaching simple direction. So 
uh, for example, if you uh, together with your child wipe the doors or wipe the mirrors, so you can teach vocabulary like la, wipe up, wipe up, wipe down, side to side, okay, windows, mirrors, all clean, dah bersih, shiny, berkilat, okay, and after that, the habis la, so you can teach your child to squeeze, twist, perah, water, drip, drop. So that is the example of vocabulary that you can teach. Okay, and another example of life routine, for example, during bath time, what to mandi. So the concept is if you use this handkerchief or towel, so you can teach concept like body parts and again, uh, follow simple directions. So uh, like wash, okay, wash your head, wash your hand, then scrub. And if you use soap and also water, you also can uh, use soap bubbles, the effect of the soap and also water like splash, splash water. You can insert funny voices just to make it more interesting. Uh, and I think your child also uh, will be more interested and happy if you insert all these kind of funny voices during the activity. And uh, another example, dah bersih wanginya. Okay. Okay, and the next one, uh, another example of life routine is during the bath, uh, sorry, the bad time. The bad time, uh, another concept of pretend play and also a daily, ro uh, daily routine concept. You can use a baby doll uh, or, a ba uh, or a bear like this. So what pretend is that you can pretend this handkerchief to be a blanket. So blanket, you can teach blanket. Okay, and then sleep, bed, tidur, selamat pagi if waktu pagi and then selamat malam if waktu malam okay and the next one uh, what you can teach is uh, another life routine concept is folding clothes lipat baju so you can uh, teach like lipat okay and then corner match corner and then the next one uh, in the same activity during the folding uh, punya activity, what you can introduce is you still can introduce new shapes to your child. For example, during the folding clothes activity, like, like this one, so you can teach like rectangle. Mami lipat dapat rectangle lah. Dapat rectangle. Lipat lagi. Dapat square. Lipat lagi dekat bucu. Match the corner. Dapat triangle. So all these simple shapes uh, you can introduce to your child. Okay. And then uh, for this one, it's more like gross motor activity. So what is gross motor activity? It's more like involvement of the uh, major movement. So like throwing. So this handkerchief, you pretend it to throw. So you can teach like throw, baling. Okay, sorry. Throw, baling. So my turn, your turn. Oh, oh, jatuh. Dapat tangkap. So that is the vocabulary that you can introduce just by pretend this uh, uh, towel or this handkerchief uh, to be something that you can teach or tackle the throwing kind of uh, skills, okay? And then last but not least is, again, you need to roll the handkerchief for this activity. During, uh, you can pretend to play top of wall ataupun tarik tali, di mana mommy dekat hujung ataupun daddy dekat hujung and anak dekat sebelah lagi satu. So, tarik. So you can introduce pull, kuatnya, jangan lepas. Okay, so these are the example of the vocabulary list uh, that I uh, suggest or recommend for the mummies and also uh, daddies. Uh, just by using uh, the things that is already available around you and then start to be more creative and make it more interesting just by using a simple handkerchief that uh, you can get at your home. Okay, so now uh, I will pass to the next speaker, Nabila, that will be uh, sharing about uh, reading strategies. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Afika. So, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning, mummies, daddies, and everyone who joined us. So, uh, our sharing session, session today. So, here I am. Uh, I am Nabila, strategist, uh, reading strategist, especially for the young kids. So we all know uh, reading uh, is a good for our child, but did you know you don't always uh, have to read the book word to word, word for word. So some children just want to flip quickly from the first page until the 
end of page and then he will uh, they will come back to the front page so some may want you to read their favorite uh, favorite story book from uh, uh, this uh, this day and then next day and then next next today and then but but spending time uh, for talking about the pictures uh, in the story books you are helping your child in de developing their understanding of what is happening in the story so what is the main goals when uh, you are uh, when you are doing this uh, reading activity with your child first is to help your child to learn and increasing their new vocabulary day by day and then second it is to increase chances or to encourage uh, bonding between uh, parents and also child in uh, parent child relationship lah. so we're moving on on how to share books or what is the, the strategies uh, in reading books with your child so first let your child choose the book so for this one just put it two books and show it to your your child so let's say your child uh, names mia so mia we want to read book so which one books do you want to read this one or this one so let your child choose one of books why why we need uh, to let them to choose the books so it is to ensure that your child is interested and want to read books so starting um uh, after they have chose their books so let your child to hold the book and then let them to turn the pages let them okay some children will look or flip the books for a moment and then they will come back open back to the first page don't worry if uh if uh, your child skip some pages um some will just look for one pages you don't have to finish the whole book in one sitting so uh and also you don't have to read book um page by page word by by words lah. instead of read uh, words um in each page you just simplify the story and talk about the pictures inside the books okay it's okay if uh the things will change uh, during that sessions because uh, we want the child to engage and have fun with the book reading read, uh, book reading some some mummies and daddies uh, notice uh, that they love uh, that your child loves to uh, look at book over and over again so mommy and daddy don't feel like my kids don't want to change to a new books so my kids will if my kids don't want to change to new books they will be like this or like this so it's okay and no need to be discouraged for this uh, this time lah. so by the familiarity or the repetitions uh, that you give them may help uh, your child to learn new words and better understanding of concept within the books so you just need to think uh, smart uh, on how to manipulate the books to attract the attentions so during um, the books readings of course you have to adding language to them first use a variety of words try to just um, avoid the naming in the pictures in the books so as it uh, as we know as all the pictures is mostly of nouns or uh, name of things animals okay. of objects try to describe uh, actions such as um uh, the baby writes the baby writes the bear uh, the baby bear is right the baby is sleep and you also can demonstrate the actions that demonstrate uh, the meaning of the words such as the baby sleeps so mommy mommy sleeps so that's what and then highlights the important words emphasize the words the important words with your voice slowing down and show to the pictures or words inside the story books okay and then expand your child's understanding for example um you can take chances in this activity in making your child's understanding better uh, through their experience such as um, you can relate uh, between the story books such as uh, the, the story books will uh, about the visit to the doctor to the clinic for the checkup so you can relate about the story books and the real life that your child has experienced 
Okay, and then the most important that I want to highlight during this book sharings or this book readings is wait, wait and wait. Wait for your child to do, wait for your child to talk, wait uh, for your child to say something. Even after you have um, either turn the page or make a reading only for one page, okay? Wait silently and avoid uh, asking questions or pointing out to anything particular on that page. Okay, try counting one to ten silently. One, two, and the ten, just to see how your child uh, respond to these pages or to, uh, how to uh, child respond to you. Okay, so by waiting times uh, during this waiting time we want to give the child to express uh, uh, chances to express themselves and also take turns uh, with you text in readings text in retelling story so it might be uh, he or she asking questions or she will tell back to you so if uh, you notice when you are in the waiting time and your child does not respond uh, to does not give any response. So you can make time, uh, you can take uh, your time to uh, just um, initiate uh, the, the moment by asking questions or by command to the teachers. Last but not least, try to acting it out. Use your body movement to tell the story. Your kids may enjoy by acting out the story with action. For example, if she enjoys uh, a story about the baby sleeping, you, uh, mummies and daddies could pretend to make action for sleep. So, uh, mommy sleep. Okay, daddy turns, daddy sleep. Okay, Mia turns. For example, uh, your child is named Mia. Lah. So, Mia turns, okay, Mia sleep. So, all of, all, all of you will make together to take turn in this activity. So, mommy and daddy don't be scared to choose storybooks as one of your activity with your child. Introduce first, introduce the storybook, storybook first and make your reading sessions become more fun. We just want your kiddo to uh, enjoy sharing books, uh, pay attention more longer and start um, to have communication with you. But more importantly, to have uh, stronger connections and also bonding uh, between uh, mummies and ladies and also your kids. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Let's go to Afika. Thank you. Thank you, Nabila. That was a very uh, interesting book reading strategies for mummies and also ladies to practice and learn. So before we proceed to our featured speakers, uh, invited speaker, Mr. Chua Chongki, I would like to uh, remind all the audiences in Facebook Live and also uh, in our Zoom meeting uh, that uh, you are allowed uh, to, or you may type in your question in the chat box at any time during the session, and we will collect and address them at the end of the session. Jadi kalau terdapat sebarang soalan, mami dan juga daddy, atau kita punya guest pada hari ini, boleh type soalan di bahagian chat box, di Facebook Live dan juga uh, di Zoom meeting, jadi kami akan uh, uh, jawab soalan itu di hujung sesi sharing nanti. Uh, so, I would like to introduce our next speakers. Uh, uh, we have Mr. Chua Chongki. He is an occupational therapist and the clinical director of Smilestone Pediatric Therapy Center Ipo. He is graduated from University Kebangsaan Malaysia, UKM, with a bachelor's degree honors in occupational therapy and have 10 years working experience with children with special needs. Um, so, um, Without any further ado, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Chua to share about the role of occupational therapists and how occupational therapists can help in behavioral management. Okay, Mr. Chua. Okay. Thank you, Afika. Okay, so uh, good morning. So I'm Chong Ki here, an occupational therapist and also a father of two kids. Uh, so I was invited to do this sharing about behavior management for children today. But due to the lockdown now and every one of us need to stay at home with our child 24 hours a day. So if I just provide you one or two strategy to manage your child behavior, I, I don't think it is enough for you to handle one or two hundred behavior that might create by them. Okay, so I decided to make some modified to the title. So I'll change it to are you as a parent ready to manage your child behavior 
instead of how or the strategy for you to manage your behavior. Okay, so hope that I can bring some awareness about uh, parents' readiness before you handle your child behavior. Okay, so are you ready? If you are comfortable, please feel free to uh, show me your uh, on your video. Then we have we can have more interaction uh, during this ten minutes sharing. Uh, don't, don't worry. Uh, if you feel comfortable, you can on your video. If you are not feeling comfortable, then just uh, keep it off. Okay. So um, if you on your video, then at least I can get a uh, more engagement with you. Uh, so that uh, I can see how is your response and then how how is your feeling. Uh, okay, so I will share my clips here now. Okay, are you ready? So now due to the lockdown, you can see uh, most of us have to stay at home with our child at least 24 hours per day, okay, during this lockdown. Okay, some of our parents some of you might have to work from home and need to take care of your child and need to prepare a meal for them. Okay, some of you, if <laughs> when you are sleeping, you might dreaming of maybe someone can help me to take care of my child, <laughs> even though for one day. Uh, okay, so if uh, these three criteria meet you, you can type in the chat box. Then let me see how many of you are having these three situation now. I give a few seconds for you so I can see the chat. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> okay, if you have one, you type one. If you have two, you type two. If you have one, two, three, you type one, two, three. <laughs> ah. Okay. Hmm. So I, I can see quite a lot of you are, we are in the same situation. <laughs> Okay, so if you are in these three situations, so actually we are not ready to manage our child. This three situation actually is very, very stressful for us to manage our child behavior. So uh, these three situations will also affect our behavior. So if our behavior affected, so our child behavior will also affected. Then you can see it's a uh, correlate uh, is uh, child behavior will affect caregiver behavior and caregiver, caregiver behavior also will affect child behavior too. So today the sharing is about how for you to aware about your own behavior, especially is the Okay, can you hear me now? I get muted. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, so, this is a uh, child behavior will affect the caregiver behavior, will affect the child behavior too. So, let's see how is our caregiver, caregiver behavior, default behavior. Uh, when you see your child throwing toys, uh, refuse to eat during mealtime, uh, fighting with sibling, or refuse to come out from bathroom when they are playing with the water in the bathroom, okay? And throwing tantrum, missing toys, when they want to find their toys, just now the speech therapist uh, get a lot of suggestion about the toys, then they, they miss it all. <laughs> so how, what is the default behavior that usually parents will, will react? So usually we'll scold, uh, like me, I will scold, where, where you put your toys? Why you are throwing toys? Why you are so angry? Uh, or you treat them? Okay, if you don't eat later, I, I won't play with you. Okay, if you don't eat later, I will isolate you. I will bring you out. <laughs> okay, or other hitting. Uh, if you're kicking the sofa, throwing tantrum, then I will hit you. Or you will force them to do the things that you want him to do, pull him out from the bathroom. Uh, okay, this is the fight reaction. That is a default behavior that uh, usually most of us will have and also we might having some some parents might have flight response that means we'll go away from the child uh, or not responding to them or ignoring them during this time 
So uh, if you are using the default behavior, you, you can type me in your chat box so I can see, uh, am I alone? <laughs> so most of the time, I, I will go to the default behavior too when we are not aware about it. Okay, let me see anyone are uh, same as me. <laughs> okay, default behavior. I can see some parents uh, same as me too. Okay, wow, wow. Okay, we, we are on the same boat. <laughs> okay, so let's see what makes us having this default behavior. Okay, this is the missing parts that usually we weren't aware about. So now let's us aware about the emotion and the feeling that bring us to the default mode. Uh, fight, scroll, hitting, threatening, uh, uh, ignore. So the emotion inside us that might bring us to the default behavior mode. Because of anger, we are going to fight. Because of fear, we might going to fight or flight. Because of frustrated, we might going to fight or flight. Because of beauty, we might going to flight. Okay, so is it the anger during that time or the emotion during that time is really dealing to that situation itself? Okay, let's see if anger, are you angry that the child is throwing the toys or you are angry about another things? Are you angry about the child don't want to come out from the bathroom or are you angry that, okay, you don't want to come out from the bathroom. Now I want to go and cook. Later, we're going to be hungry. We cannot get my, our food. You don't want to come out, I cannot cook my lunch, then I'm angry. So when I'm angry, the management way that we go, we go for the default behavior uh, or fear. Whether you are fearing of the child throwing toys or you fear of other things, fearing of the comment from others, maybe grandparents that they are comment about you, why you are not teaching them well you're not teaching them well, you let them throw the toys, okay? So that bring you to that default behavior that you have to manage them during that time, okay? Or they are frustrated, frustrated for what they are doing. You expect them to eat now, but they are not fulfilling your, your needs. They are not eating. <laughs> so you are frustrated because they are not fulfilling our needs. Uh, then they are disappointed us. That's why we react to the default behavior or guilty, guilty that we are not responsible for our own role as a parent. We have to manage or we have to teach them if they are doing something bad or something negative from our perception. So this emotion that coming in, usually we won't aware about it. We will just straight away go to the behavior. So uh, that's why today uh, I'm, uh, thinking of sharing this with you about this emotion and feeling in inside us that bring us to the default behavior so that we have the uh, control to reprogram our behavior. I mean, it's parents' behavior. Reprogram parents' behavior because before we want to manage our child behavior. Okay, so... Um, you can see if you reprogram the behavior, the changes inside us uh, is important. So you can see the acceptance of the situation of the event that's happening or understanding what is happening, why they throw toys, why they refuse to eat, why they are fighting, uh, why they don't want to come out from the bathroom, why the toys is always missing. So the understanding part is getting us to accept better. So if we understand, we know what's happening, we are calm. So the reprogram behavior will be better outcome. So the reprogram behavior usually is uh, like the strategy that uh, Dr. Zhu asked us to share the behavior management. Uh, so the behavior management strategies coming in uh, will be more efficient if the uh, emotion or feeling parts that we're aware about, we get changes in that. Uh, we can get changed, then the outcome of the reprogrammed behavior will be better. Mm. Okay. So now, how? Let's see how to change the emotion or the feeling. Uh, it's not easy. 
Uh, so from here, I want to share about some of my myself. So this is the past that uh, I can share from the parents' perception. So as a parent, so during this MCO, uh, I learned a lot from my child <laughs> about these parts, about these parts. So um, usually I uh, will go to the default parents mode. Uh, if therapies seldom we will get to the default parents mode because we our modes will be acceptance, we understand and we will come if we are a therapist. Once come to uh, parents, the default mode will come because our child will bring our emotion, will bring our feeling more than our client. So during this MCO, you can see, uh, for example, um, my, my daughter, my daughter will become very angry, anxious if she can't find the toys that she wants. So she will kick, she will kick the sofa, uh, she will kick you, yes, she will kick me. And then, so if I come to a default mode, before MCO, I come to a default mode. So I will hit his leg. <laughs> I will hit his leg. So uh, this is the default mode, hit his leg. So what is the outcome? If I hit his leg, he will stop kicking or he will kick more. Usually he will kick more. So this is how our default mode change our child behavior to he kick more. So he kick more, then I, I will kick, kick, kick harder, right? Uh, so he will kick more. <laughs> okay, so this process will come as a circle if we don't break it, if we don't break it. So that's why uh, come to a point, we need to think about this default mode, is it have any option, uh, any option. So change to the acceptance, uh, we have to accept this kicking behavior. Okay, I accept you are uh, very angry because you cannot find your toys. So I accept first. Accept didn't mean I allow you or I agree with you to kick me or kick the sofa. I accept this behavior, you are angry. Okay, I understand you, you are angry. Okay, then that time I'm more calmer. When I'm more calmer, I have other choice how to manage her. So I know that you are angry, okay? So I will stay uh, distant from you so you won't kick me. Then I will stay there with you. I let you calm down first. Mm. Calm down first, stop keeping, kicking. Then I can tell her after she is calm. After she is calm, then I can tell her, okay, now you are calm. I don't like you to kick me just now. Okay, so you can't find your toys, right? So what can we do? So come with some strategy now. What can we do? So we can go and find the toys together. Okay, or why you cannot find your toys? Next time, what should you do? Okay, you can keep your toys at the appropriate way or the place that you know where you put. Okay, okay. Maybe you all can hear some sound <laughs> because I'm in cleaning now. Some, some kid is showing his emotion there. <laughs> okay, so this is how that we, we are going through. So you can see uh, for today, I share some three things for you to bring home. Lah. How to get to this status because it's not easy. It's a process, maybe a lifelong process if you have child, if you need to deal with your child. Okay, first, um, aware about your own emotion or your feeling when you are dealing with your child that time. So how do you feel when your child react in this behavior, uh, which is a negative behavior or behavior that be, bring us emotionally, bring us up, okay, before we react first. So this awareness is for us to aware it. If we're aware about it, we have chances to change it. We have, we have other options to choose if you're aware about it, okay? So number two, uh, be kind to yourself. Uh, you are not alone, okay? We are all, we'll go into the default mode because this is a, our brain function for us to uh, keep ourselves safe or for us to react in, in a default mode. So you are not alone. Be kind to yourself if you are doing that. So you get other chance or you get other choice 
uh, if you're aware of it in future. Okay, uh, this time is not easy. Uh, everyone locked down at home and then a lot of stress, uncertainty. So uh, be kind to yourself before uh, you want to handle your child first. Okay, so number three is not every, every negative behavior need to be managed. Uh, not every negative behavior need to be managed means um, some negative behavior for us is not negative for them. <laughs> okay, some behavior we no need to just go want to manage and go and manage it. Uh, he will, uh, they will try to cope by himself or uh, some behavior we have no strategy or uh, we have no skill to just take it away. Uh, we have to accept it and then we have to understand why they have this behavior. Okay, so um, hopefully <laughs> this sharing can bring some awareness only. Uh, not going deep into it because uh, the time limits, but at least this awareness will bring you to think, okay, my child is showing some behavior. <laughs> okay, I need to manage it. So are you ready? Are you calm enough? Are you angry or are you uh, feel frustrated, fear? Uh, when we are not in a ready mood, give us some time. And then if I'm not ready, ask your partner to come and over, take over the child. Uh, then uh, the situation will be better. Okay, so are you ready to manage your behavior? I mean, parents' behavior now. So before you manage the child behavior. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chua, for such an informative sharing. You gave a clearer picture to all the parents and also to us uh, as a future speech therapist. Uh, I, I bet there are many students also join us for today's sharing session uh, on how we uh, can start to control our feeling, emotion, being more acceptance, be more, being more uh, understanding and also start to be more calm when we face uh, the negative behavior or the behavior that uh, shown by the child. So um, now uh, we are already at the end of the sharing session. So um, I've seen, uh, I've received several questions uh, and I think this question, uh, we would like to hear from uh, Mr. Chua. Okay, so I will read the question. So the first question, um, how to handle siblings fight calmly at home? And then uh, the next question is, what is the best way to say no to your child? Mr. Chua? How, first question is how yes. to... Handle how siblings fight calmly at home. Wow, okay. <laughs> okay, my two daughters still fighting uh, this morning <laughs> before I come for this sharing. Uh, the fighting is not the things that we need to handle. So if uh, they are not hurting themselves or they are not hurting each other, the fight is still in control. So let them go through the fight first for, from my, my management. <laughs> let them go through the fight and if really they hurt each other, stop them first. Let them calm down. And then uh, need to understand what happened before they go to the fight. Uh, that's the first thing. You need to know what's happened before they fight. Uh, uh, whether it's the sister uh, trigger the brother or the brother trigger the sister. Uh, so if you know, uh, don't manage it that time. Manage it or uh, telling them what is going on after they are come down. <laughs> I mean, everything won't go to the cognitive level during the feeling of fear, angry, or guilty. Uh, it, won't, it will shift to a survival mode. That, that means it will shift to a default mode for the child too. Okay, so during that time, if you tell them so many things, they, they won't listen. <laughs> so uh, let them calm down. Uh, uh, so first thing you have to accept that it's natural for them to fight. This is their learning process to how to manage with the uh, social situation or social problem that coming up in future too. Uh, so how you deal with it. Okay, fighting is their solution. What other solution that you have 
Mm. So this happened after their fight, not during their fight. Mm. Uh, can you repeat the second question? Yes, sure. The second question is, what is the best way to say no to your child? Okay, so the best way to say no to your child, that means uh, for sure when we are ready, I mean when we are ready, you are calm enough, you are ready enough, you have your limits, so you can say no. Uh, if you say no, you expected to get the tantrum for them, you have to accept it. Okay, I mean like, okay, so now it's lunchtime, no food. Okay, you have to be ready for that. That means you have to be ready for that calmly. If they throw tantrum, they throw toys, or they kick you, or they hit you, the no means no. Uh, you stay on it, no. So they won't get it. They will throw tantrum, you will throw toys, they will kick you. Uh, so this will come. But the no means no, no food. <laughs> you won't get it too. Okay? Until they come down, they don't get the food. Then this thing already done. <laughs> uh, the no already done. Mm. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chua, for the explanation. So I think uh, the next one, we have a question uh, about how do we teach our children to learn how to share their toys at home? And uh, as I mentioned in the early of our sharing session, we also have uh, two panelists for today. We have Dr. Chu Xin Yi, uh, a speech language therapist from UKM, and also Miss Faith, a co-founder from Blue Prism and a speech language therapist. And I think maybe we can uh, ask the opinion from Miss Faith about this question. Miss Faith, are you there? Hi, good morning. Yes, good morning. So, do you need me to repeat the question? Let me try. I think from what I picked up is there are parents who are wondering how do we get our children to share toys at home? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a really good question. And, you know, it is also what our therapists are facing in their day-to-day -day session. Yeah. So, on a high level that we share from two parts, what we usually do first, and from there we will see some good effect. So the first part is we first have to understand that sharing to children is quite a complex situation. So all the dads and the moms here, if you can try to imagine with me, right? So today, if I love chocolate ice cream and I only have one, and then my child asks me, Mommy, can I, have, can I have the ice cream too? Can I just lick one time? But this is my favorite ice cream. So all of us have our favorite things. So in order to be able to share with someone else, it does take some processing in the process, right? There are some questions, there's some reluctance and emotions going on in the children's mind. So that is step one. So what we usually suggest is first step, get the two child to sit together to play. They could be playing with different set of toys, but as long as they can sit next to each other without a fight, calmly, and sometimes child A would just look at child B and say, oh, that looks quite interesting. But they are not sharing. It's okay, that is a good first step. So in a professional term, we call it a parallel play. So two children playing side by side, right? This is also very common as we see children first going into kindergarten before they learn how to share and learn how to make friends. All right, step one, get them sit together, play, and parents sit with them. Don't insist them on, oh, you must share this, you must do this, you must do that. Just help them, support them, make them feel comfortable. All right, when you feel that, okay, they seem to be all right, with being in the same small space with each other, they feel safe, they don't feel that, oh, my toys are going to be taken away. Right. Then you move to step two. Step two, what our therapists usually do is we ask parents to prepare the same set of toys. You know, we work with several twins, right? They are quite cute in a way whereby if the parents buy two set of bowling, and you know bowling has balls and pin, right? They need to have the same colors too. If they see a different colors, they thought it's different toys and they start fighting. 
So step two, you get the same set of toys. Even if you just have one set of bowling, I will ask the therapist, just split into half. Make sure child A have two blues, two reds, child B as well. And just hide the rest of the colors. All right. So with that, as they start playing together, parents, you can facilitate. Or you could say, oh, you have a black ball. You have a black ball too. Can we exchange? Just three seconds. All right. Give this to Coco or give this to JJ or give this to your brother. Give this to your sister. One, two, three. Good job. Good exchange. Now, exchange back. So that is that. So be very patient once just to be okay with exchanging. All right. After that, step three, when they can exchange, it's, start, it's time to start to take turns. So now put the same set of toys back in the center. Let child A play for three seconds. You have to do the counting because children, it's normal for them to want whatever they want immediately. You can also put, sometimes we put a timer. We say, all right, now you play first. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Good waiting. Now it's your turn because you waited very well. Now I will give you a turn. All right, so step one, sit together, play calmly. Step two, exchange, same set of toys, sometimes with the same colors, look exactly the same. And then step three, get them to take turns and make sure you put a timer and set the expectations that, oh, because you waited well, so now it's your turn and you're going to wait five seconds. Let's count together. So I think on a high level, just start with those three steps. If you have any further questions, you can get in touch with any one of us. Right, I will hand you back to the host and I believe Dr. Chu would have some good suggestions too. Yes, uh, what a very good three steps that uh, mummies and babies can start to, uh, to, to practice now when you want to, to teach your child how to share toys at home. How about, Mr., uh, how about we, if we also hear opinion from Dr. Chu? about this question? Oh, I think uh, Miss Faith has already uh, given a very good three-step strategies to us. I just want to add one more strategy is the, um, instead of we are teaching the kid, but us as the parents, the dad and the mom could actually uh, be the good role model for the kids throughout their development by sharing. If we wanted to teach them sharing, so the mom and the dad should really share things together. For example, if mommy is buying a pint of uh, ice cream, okay, from Baskin Robin or from wherever, wherever and uh, we can have different cups. So in that way, mommy can say, I have ice cream, strawberry ice cream. So who wants it? Raise your hands, raise your hands. So then we can distribute the cups to the siblings and to the daddy. Okay, so we can have uh, one scoop for the dad, one scoop for the uh, coco, one scoop for the chiche, and then one scoop for the little one. Okay, and then one, maybe one more scoop for, for the grandparents. Okay, in that way, we are teaching them sharing in a more um, daily uh, situations. Okay, that's my suggestions to all the parents that uh, we should always incorporate uh, these kind of teachings during our daily life. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for the good questions. Yes, Dr. Jai, I think you can uh, help us to answer uh, another question about uh, how do we teach our kid to respect and love their toys rather than destroy it? Fantastic questions. Okay, I think uh, the mom or the dad who actually asked this question is um, what we exactly wanted to teach them is actually the idea of empathy. Okay, we should really uh, teach the kids to uh, have this feeling of empathy before they can really respect the objects or the person. Okay, if you have a lot of toys and the toys is not appreciating, okay, the, then we have to teach the kids how to appreciate it first. And then feel if uh, the toy is uh, destroyed. How do you feel? So the process is first, we can give example to the kids. Let's say you have a toy, okay? And uh, you can put a Band-Aid on, 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 the, on the baby doll. And just tell the kid, you see the baby doll is hurt right now because you actually cut the baby girl. Okay, just like remember two months ago when you fall down, 
you hurt yourself. Does it hurt? You bleed at that time. So what did mama do on that time? Mama give you a bandaid. So when you fall down, you bleed. Mama give you loves. Mama give you bandaid. So what should you do when you hurt your uh, baby doll? Your baby doll will have the same feeling as well. Okay. So now you have to go ahead and uh, give a bandaid to uh, the doll. Okay. So similarly, you cannot actually uh, destroy your other toys or you cannot really uh, hurt your other siblings as well. Okay. So that would be the example of how to uh, respect or, or how to build up some sympathy feeling for your kids first. Okay. Yes, I agree on that, Dr. Chu. Yeah, maybe we can also hear uh, other opinion from uh, Mr. Chua. Uh, what do you think about uh, how we can teach our kids uh, on how to respect and also how to also show their love uh, to the things that they have or to their siblings, to the toys that they also have? Yes, Mr. Chua. Okay. Is that question is about how to appreciate the toys that they have? Yes. Uh, okay. So before, for my opinions, uh, before they can appreciate, they, they might have to feel if they spoil it or they lose it, how is the feeling of loss? Uh, if they have the feeling of loss, so maybe they get the feeling of appreciate. Uh, but for kids now, <laughs> If they lost now, they, they get replacement, they get other replacement. So if they get the replacement, the feeling of loss is not there. Uh, so uh, the amount of toys or the toys that they have is too much, even though if they lost one of them or they spoil one of them, they, they won't feel that loss. Uh, if they don't feel that loss, they won't appreciate that. <laughs> that is for my point of view. Mm, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chua. I think maybe we can start to use the strategies or the tips that shared by one of our speakers who's not, that uh, also shared about how we can uh, practice uh, toys rotating. So with fewer toys, if one of their toys go missing or just maybe uh, uh, already gone, the parts, of, uh, the parts of the toys, so they will learn more on how to appreciate the things that they have. So... Um, with all of this uh, question, I think we already reached to the end of our sharing session. Um, before ending our session, I, Afika, as the representative for our sharing session today, would like to thank you to all of our audiences in Facebook Live and also in the Zoom room, uh, as well as to our invited speakers, Mr. Chua Chongki, and also to our panelists, Dr. Chu Xining and Ms. Faith Ng, for a very interesting sharing on uh, uh, on the tips and also answering the question that we got for today. So, um, as well as to all the audiences, thank you uh, as you spent your time in Saturday morning by joining us for today. We hope you will be enlightened and until we meet again. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we take a photo together? Yes, sure. Maybe the audiences, uh, you may open your video. We can take a photo together for a memory. <laughs> Here you go. All right. Who's taking it? Eh? Sharina. Thank you. Um, all right, you ready? Yep. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay.